there's no question that the Republican Party today is dominated, driven, and intimidated by Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans. They do not believe in the rule of law. MAGA forces are determined to take this country backwards. They promote authoritarian leaders, and they fan the flames of political violence. President Biden, in his Soul of the Nation speech, tearing into former President Trump and many of his supporters, he has since walked back those comments, but a New York Times columnist doesn't buy that. He says Biden is drawing a hard us versus them line ahead of the high stakes midterms and beyond. Quote, you may believe that American democracy is threatened as at no point since the Civil War, dear reader, but they do not. They are running a political operation in which the threat to democracy is leverage used to keep swing voters on side without having to make difficult concessions to the center or the right. Let's bring in Joe Concha, media columnist at The Hill and a Fox News contributor. I didn't think that this Thursday speech could get any uh, more interesting. I'm still hung up on the red background. Um, but now this. A yeah. And I think this uh, columnist has a point. He is politicizing at the very best. And the fact that the administration wants us to buy that this wasn't supposed to be a political speech doesn't say much about their confidence in the intelligence of the American public. Julie, I would even go further than politicizing. I would even say weaponizing, right? Mm -hmm. It's a classic and, and, quite frankly, disgusting tactic used in politics in an effort to stay in power. It's addition by division. Here you have the president delivering a primetime speech to the nation, and he calls 74 million voters his own citizens semi-fascist. I mean, what, what even is that? It's like the Diet Coke of fascism. You know, hey, just one calorie. But, but meanwhile, during this speech, not once, Julie, not once does the president mention any of the issues the American people say are most important to them. So Selena Zito laid it out perfectly with, with Griff Jenkins earlier. You know, issues like inflation, uh, like who actually pays for the trillion dollars the student loan forgiveness plan will cost, uh, like mentioning fentanyl, which kills a record number of younger Americans in this country year after year, or, or even mentions the crisis that is a catastrophe at the U.S. southern border, or limp bail laws allowing criminals to repeat violent offenses over and over again. That's the true threat to citizens in this country. Instead, you have a president of a party that, that cannot run on these issues, so it's a class Classic deflection ploy with hyperbole dialed up to 11 and fear being the greatest motivator. It is a political operation indeed, Julie. Yeah, let's take a look at how Americans feel because maybe they should actually listen to what the what is on the minds of Americans, those who are very frustrated with this administration and with the uh, with the president. Let's watch. Okay. I think we're more um, more divided than we ever were. The country has never been unified, to be honest with you, and whatever Biden said he was going to do, it hasn't been done. This is not a fascist country. Too many people gave too much to make sure that it's not. I mean, why are they not listening and why are they not actually addressing the issues in America that mean most? Because he didn't bring up so many different things, um, uh, immigration, crime, gas prices, opioid addiction, uh, immigration, right. <laughs> because this president has never actually visited the border. And that is what's hurting him along these border states. He doesn't even bother visiting those states because they're Republican. So he's clearly campaigning yeah. while ignoring half the country and insulting more than half the country. And that's the thing, Julie. I mean, he doesn't even visit Arizona, for example, and that's a Senate race that could go either way. So mm -hmm. one would think that he would visit there and address the border issue, which is huge in, in that state. But it's not happening because maybe, you know, the candidate also doesn't want him there and Mark Kelly. Uh, but instead of unifying, you go back and you watch his inauguration speech again. Uh, it's amazing that this is still the same president that was speaking on that January day. And now we no longer have President Joe Biden. We have some sort of weird combination of President Keith Operman meets Brian Williams, right? And, and I guess the plan is to appeal to diehard MSNBC audiences to win the elections coming up. That, that's quite the strategy. And I think in the end, voters, they want a positive message, right? And, and all we see from this administration, and I'm with you on that, that blood red backdrop, it was something okay. like right out of The Shining. You expected like an elevator to open at some point. Uh, it, it's selling fear and loathing. And, and I think that's not what voters want. They want, what are you going to do to make my life better? Not, mm -hmm. here's everything that's wrong with the country. I just don't think right. it, it's ever worked really in too many campaigns. I always like to see the positive glass half full, if you will. So I got some really good Halloween yeah. decorating uh, tips Thursday night. I'm going to do red lighting on uh, outside my house. That'll scare the trick-or-treaters away. Wow. Yeah.
just like he did. I'm coming. He scared us all on Thursday night. <laughs> all right, Joe Concha, thank oh, you so much. Griff. We'll do Skittles sometime, Julie. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.